Morning, folks. Moses Woodson here at my high desert homestead. It's really peaceful this morning. We've got snow on the ground. Today, we're finally going to start packing in materials uh, over at our friend's house uh, down in that canyon. We're going to take a head over there. I've got to get some things ready. A fender fell off the trailer. I've got to put it on. So, I'm going to go get all the morning chores done and got a surprise to show you. If you've seen our social media, you probably already know what it is. We got baby pigs. She started having them last night. You hear them in there. Uh, she's pretty protective. There's one. Keeping them warm. Oh, here we go. We got a little baby. Coming out. That black. Should have stayed inside. It's cold out here, Lillian. <laughs> like I say, she's a pretty protective mama. And she will get excited when she's got babies. She's got five, and they seem to all be doing well, so I'm going to leave her alone. On a farm, ranch, or homestead, any place that uses equipment on a daily basis, it's never as simple as hooking up and taking off. There's always something that needs to be fixed, flat tires, fenders falling off, wire not working. If we never used them, never used them as hard as we do in the country that we live in, it would be pretty simple. But everybody out there that owns a horse trailer or flatbed trailer or tractor or anything that has to do with farming and ranching knows in order to do something, you got to fix something so you can go do something. And when what you're doing is involving livestock, it's never as simple as going and grabbing them and throwing them on a trailer. Uh, particularly in the wintertime, you've got to clean them up. You've got to take and get all the mud, and the ice, and the dirt off of them, which is something you have to do any time of the year, but the wintertime is, presents a little bit more of a challenge. What I'm getting at is that on a homestead or a farm or a ranch, you just can't be in a hurry. When you're making plans, you've got to take into account that things probably aren't going to go just exactly the way you want them to, and they're not going to go as fast as sometimes in our mind that we think it should. And we have to realize that maybe we're not going to get as much done in a day as we really want to either but it is what it is particularly when you live off grid and you live really long distances away from whatever it is you're going to do Okay, folks, we're over here at the property and got Cowboy out. And uh, I've got to get some concrete loaded up. We're going to take concrete and post down. We're going to take some bob wire down. Uh, we got here kind of late, but that's just the nature of things. It takes time to do anything, and especially when you're two or three hours out from where you're going. 
all I got left to do now is get the panners on him, get them loaded up, get down that canyon. Cowboy is Anna's first horse. He was a present from a lady that we did some work for. In fact, both the kids got one. They both got a pony out of the same mare. And George's little pony didn't quite work out. She was a little bit of a rank horse. She liked to buck. And Cowboy, let's just say we've had a love-hate relationship. He's about 15, and he's just now becoming what I would call a good seasoned horse. When he was two years old, he could jump a five foot fence flat footed. We called him an escape artist. He's flipped panels, he's jumped fences, he's opened gates. And if he hadn't been Anna's, I probably would have sent him down the road a long time ago. But all these years later, I'm glad I didn't. Anna's about the only one who can get along with him. I can ride him. He's about bucked me off a time or two. And when I didn't have any other horse and I had fence riding jobs and different, different things you do uh, on cattle ranches, I, I've used him. Uh, he's a good pack horse. He hasn't packed very much, but he's been all over the country. When I was an equine clinician, we traveled all over the country teaching people how to train horses, uh, how to deal with problem horses. He went with us every summer. So he's been around and he's done a lot of things. And most of the time, he's a pretty good horse. He's kind of like your wild child. You love him, you do anything in the world for him, but you know at some point they're going to do something that's just not in their best interest. He does that quite a bit. He gets tangled in fences. He gets impatient. He gets tangled up when he's tied. He likes to be on the go. It's not really that he's a bad horse. It's just he's got more energy than he knows what to do with. Kind of like a three-year-old kid who just don't have enough jobs. That's probably the biggest problem with most horses in America today. They're overfed and underworked. So getting him out here and putting him to work is really good for him. He takes and gets to be useful, gets to earn his, his oats as we say, and it's helping me out. I don't have to work near as hard. Okay, we're all loaded. I've got 160 pounds of concrete on him, uh, two sets of posts. We've got to set four posts, 12 bags of concrete. So this will be trip number one. We also got to take some plastic down with us to uh, wrap the concrete so it doesn't get wet. Uh, he could carry more weight. I mean, he carries me, but this is dead weight over rough country, so... We're not going to push it, but I'm no packing expert. I used to pack years ago. I, I packed uh, when I worked on some ranches, but I haven't packed in years. But all my knots, I think, are good. Uh, I think it'll stay on there till we get to the bottom of the canyon. So here we go.
this belly rope is 40 feet long. <laughs> the last time this was used was carry elk <laughs> out of the mountains. Oh, son. Run over mama. That came like that together, like that? Yeah. This is a belly band. It helps support the bags a little bit to keep the leathers from wearing out. Oh, because. Yeah. You put it on there and tighten it up and tie it off, and you can use the, the different pieces of it to help help you pack your loads. Like I said, I ain't no I ain't no packing expert. I packed some when I worked on ranches and I was a kid and teenager, but I can get it where I'm going. <laughs> I can get what I'm hauling to where I'm going. It may not be orthodox. Having plenty of ropes when you're packing is important. If I was going on a long trip, packing in, I would never have packed these like this, but kind of knew where I was going and knew my plans to kind of get there. So, How far do you think we're away from the truck or materials? Uh, from the materials, straight to it. Of course, we didn't come in straight, but straight to it, we're probably... A good quarter of a mile, at least. A quarter of a mile is around 1,500 feet. So we're a good quarter of a mile away, and to have to pack this by hand, wouldn't be too fun. He was able to pack 160 pounds of concrete these posts. So. Oh. Where are you going, cowboy? You mm. said you're getting some of that weight off of me. Mm -hmm. One side got lighter. Trying to get under my load. And then... Sometimes you can't pick it up like you'd like to, and if you got a skittish horse, sometimes they'll run from you. He ain't been worked that much here lately, so. Maybe best. Busted. Oh no. But still all right. We'll wrap it in plastic and it'll be all right till we get back down here. We're huffing and puffing. Mama's running the camera today and only on our first trip. And Always huffing and puffing. <laughs> Had 
having it balanced on the horse. helps if somebody's on the other side to put your loops on. That helps hold the outside of your panners there. Now, I'm gonna figure out a new way to do this. Round two, we got it a little bit different. Use some straps, use whatever got you got it available. Um, I did a little bit more webbing with the belly band and rope, um, tied it a little different. Hopefully it doesn't slide out as bad before it was sliding out going downhill. So here we go, trip two. This is the corner. What was it? The back west, northwest corner. Ish. Now, one of these posts got to go up in that far corner. So, I had to come back for it. You guys gonna unload everything right here? Yeah, I'm gonna try to haul three down the next couple of trips, three bags of concrete, mm -hmm. and drop them because we gotta have several here. We gotta take three over there, so I'm gonna try to haul three at a time. Three? That's an odd number. You gonna put one on top? Put one on top, I think. Cool. Try to. If they'll stay. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna do our best to get the state. Sit one right there across. And then strap it over. Yeah. Awesome. We'll put a blanket on there, sit down. 
rough it up near his back. I do a couple of saw buck ties on it. I think it'll stay. How much do you think, babe? Enough to cover. Huh? Enough to cover three. Three feet? Four feet? Three bags. This trip three down the canyon, it's getting cold. The sun's getting close to setting. We might get down in there and get this uh, wrapped. You ever seen dual exhaust on a horse? <laughs> but it's all tied on and I don't think it's gonna come off. That, that concrete's wedged right in that pack saddle, so. Cowboy's gonna have a little bit harder time with it, just a little bit heavier, but it ain't as heavy as me. It's give him plenty of time. He's doing really good, really taking his time and watching, being patient. So we're gonna do it one more time, probably wrap up the concrete, and then we'll have to come back another day and do it all over again. there don't weigh very much. Socks is terrible. It is, it's cold in the shade. I 
Alrighty, folks, that's going to do it for today. We got, what, three trips done? We got three more to go. We did take some of the material down there that we'll use on the other end. Cowboy did good and uh, real proud of him. Handled himself really well with all that weight. We're going to go home and get us a tater and a bean. And until next time, remember, be not weary and well doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. We'll see you later. Snack, cowboy.